people are often eager to tell you what success looks like. What education, what experiences, what networking and resources you need in your pursuit of happiness. But this is my deepest prayer for you. May you learn to harness your energies toward your passion. May you remember that true strength is found in gentleness. May you keep your word even when it's hard. May you find the good in yourself and see the good in others. May you keep in mind that everyone is fighting their own battle and the greatest gift you can give is a kind word. May you fight the urge to be in a hurry, knowing that time is a non-renewable resource. May you find ways to bring peace into your relationships. May you know and experience the fullness of joy. May you feel, know, and share love with everyone. Because without it, life is just noise. These are your credentials. This is how you are known. Let these traits be your calling card. May the seeds you've planted continue to bear fruit for endless seasons ahead. You know, the other night I was kind of walking through the house and I saw this editorial on TV and, and it's one of those things where they say this is not necessarily the opinion of this station, you know, all that kind of stuff that they say, but the thrust of the editorial was this. You can still make it. You can make something of yourself in a nation when all opportunities seem like they are gone, but you're going to have to get educated. Now, I've, I've talked about this before in one of our our graduating services, but I want to talk about it again today. You know, there are jobs available. There's all kinds available. It, it, but if you want to flip burgers for the rest of your life, you're going to have to get some kind of education, whether it is going to a trade school, which some coffee, she said, would you like some cream? Oh, Prince Supreme. And he wanted some cream. Now, Mickey thought he had caught on. So he, you know, he, he thought he's picking up on this thing. So the prince asked, you saw the sugar bowl there. He looked at the prince and he said, you want some sugar, you hairy booger? <laughs> you know, he still didn't get it. See what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you just think you understand something when you really don't. A lot of people are like that when it comes to living and reaching their goals and being successful in life. You've got to have an education. You've got to understand. You've got to find out if you're going to be successful in life, at school, at home, on job, as a Christian, in your marriage, whatever it might be, you've got to be educated. And so I, I've talked about this before, but you need three things. You need a BA, MA, and a PhD in order to be successful. That's what you need. You're going to ha if you're going to reach your goals, you need a, 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 a BA, MA, and a PhD. So let's talk about that. The BA. First, we're going to talk about the BA, which means a believing attitude. You know, the, the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 23 and 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, you've heard all kinds of statements. You may not know what you think you are, but you are what you think. And that's true. If you think you are beaten, you are. The man who wins is the man who thinks he can. This is a biblical concept. I mean, you can believe and receive, or you can doubt, and you can do without. I mean, that's the way it is. The Bible teaches that. A believing attitude is important in any area of life. It's critical, critical in your success as a Christian. For instance, Jesus is on record saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And then he talks about in Matthew chapter 14, 31, why do you doubt, O little faith? Oh, you have little faith. And then he talks about in Hebrews eleven six, it is impossible to please God without faith. You can't please God if you don't have faith. And so it's impossible to reach your goals without that BA. And, you, you know, and, and, and you, you're responsible for the way you think. Again, you know, a lot of people have bad thinking. And, and so they, 
bad thinking reflects in their attitudes and they're, they're you know, sit soaking sour all the time. You know, they're just always moaning, and groaning, and carrying on. You know, that's the way they are. I mean, some people, because of their attitude, they only, the closest they ever come to joy is when they do the dishes. I mean, they don't know what it is. And so he's telling us we need to have a believing attitude according to your faith being into you. No wonder if you don't have a firm faith in God and, a, and like we talked about in our class this morning, how that God preserves us and know that God is going to take care of us. No wonder you have had so many problems in your life. You need that believing attitude. Now we can change the way we think by having a believing attitude, a B.A., like the little fellow I heard about, he was playing ball and there's little, you know, they were a little bit behind, but you couldn't have proved it by him. I mean, he had such a good attitude about everything. You know, he was playing third base and the man walked up to the fence and he asked the boy, he says, what's the score? The bases are full. No one is out. They're up 24 to nothing. You're getting beat pretty bad, aren't you? The man said. He answered, no, sir, not at all. Our side hadn't got up to bat yet. 24 to nothing. Yeah, you know, it's possible. He, he, like another little boy, you know, was up there, he was playing. He didn't have anybody to play with. He's out in the yard. He's playing ball. He, he's throwing the ball up and he'd swing at it, you know, and throw the ball up. And he got, he got, threw it up once. He swung and he missed it. And he threw it up again. He swung another time and missed it. Threw it up a third time and swung it again and he missed it. He just, with all confidence, says, What a pitcher. <laughs> you know, it's all in your attitude. You need to have a believing attitude. But, we have got to go and get more education. That means an MA. What is, just because you got a BA, that's not enough. You need to have an MA. What's an MA? MA. It's a motivated action. The Bible tells us, whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might. Again, that's Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. Some folks just quitted the BA. They think, you know, well, I, you know, I believe that's enough. I got a believing attitude. I think everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be wonderful. God's going to take care of me and all these things. And they don't put any action into their lives. And they think that God's just going to hand them everything. We have a whole generation that thinks that life is going to be handed to them on a silver platter because they've been given, every, given everything. They, you know, they may have a believing attitude, but you've got to have some action. You go through life just believing, you know, things are going to get better. A better job is going to come my way. The right person's going to come along. I'm going to lose those 15 pounds. I just believe I'm going to be a strong Christian. But a BA without a MA, believing attitude without motivated action, will never amount to anything. You've got to be motivated to move if you're going to improve. A lot of people plan to work, but they don't work the plan. You know, they have all these ideas of how to get things done, but they never go through with it. And I can relate to this one. It's like people who plan to lose weight. You know, they get all kinds of stuff, to sorts of things to lose their weight. You know, they, got all the, they buy all these things, and they buy a, a gym membership and all these things. Like this one fellow said, I spent a fortune on a trampoline, a stationary bike, and a rowing machine, complete with gadgets to read my pulse and gadgets to tell the progress results and gadgets to show the miles I've charted, but they left off one gadget, the one to get me started. You know, that's the way a lot of us are. You got to get started. You got to have me motivated to move. That's why James said faith without works is dead. You got to have to do something. You know, these, these people are like, oh, all I got to do is believe that God for Christ, they can forgive me my sins and that's all there is and nothing's going to happen. And, you know, I'm just going to be, become a Christian. It's like, you know, it's like getting on an elevator. You just press the button, go on up. You know, there's nothing to do and all these kinds of things. No, it's not like that. It's more like flying a plane to New York. Larry, you, 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 you fly. You know, if you stop, what happens? You drop. That's right. <laughs> You stop, you drop. That's the way it is with life. I mean, you know, that's the way it is with your Christianity. If you're not moving forward, you're going down. And you need to understand that. You see, that believing attitude, that without that MA, the motivated action, simply amounts to daydreaming. Again, let's say it the way that James says it in James chapter 2 and verse 17 and 18. Faith without works is dead. Just because you believe, you will not receive unless you get to moving. You got to move on what you believe. You've got to have a BA and an MA if you're going to be successful. If you're going to be successful in life, you're going to have to believe a believing attitude. 
And you're going to have to have some motivated action. You're going to have to put some action behind what you believe. You know, again, I could tell you all day long, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, uh, we got a fire in here now. Someone says, uh, the, you know, the building's on fire. And you say, you know, I do smell some smoke. I believe, I believe what he said was so. And you sit here and it ain't going to do you any good if you burn up here in the building believing it. If you don't get up and move. Well, that's the way with a lot of people's faith. You know, they can smell the fires of hell and they can know that all these different things are going on. They can hear what God's message is for the saved. They can hear what his message is towards the lost and there's no motion on their part. They don't move. A believing attitude, a BA without an MA is foolishness. We need to get that. But not, now, now that you've got on and, and a little more educated, that means you've got to get a PhD. Now, what's a PhD? That's pure human determination. Because as most of you already know, everything's not always going to work out in life. If somebody haven't told you that way, maybe that's the reason you're here this morning. I want to tell you, kids, look at me. Things don't always work out. Things aren't going to go the way you think they're going to go all the time. You know, you're not going to get a, you can't get roses without the thorns unless somebody else picks them off for you mom and dad's been doing that for a long time but you're going to get out and you're going to find that a lot with all the roses you have there's a lot of thorns you know, you're going to have to understand that there's going to be problems in your life there's going to be difficulties in your life because most of us already know again everything, everything's not going to work out the way you thought it was going to work out I, some of you got some plans. You think, man, I know what I'm going to do. I'm, I, you know, I've gotten through high school. I, I'm graduated high school. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to graduate from college. I'm going to find me a boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm going to get married. We're going to get jobs. We're going to, we're going to settle down. We're going to buy a house. We're going to fill it full of furniture. We're going to have two cars. We're going to have uh, kids, and we're going to have all these different things. And oh, I just can't wait for all this stuff to happen. Things don't always work out the way you want to. Some of you may not get to go to college. Some of you may not find the right mate. And when you, you know, you, you, it's kind of like, you know, we, you, we saw all these little kids. And, boy, sometimes you had these kids, you think, boy, when they're a little bitty, you just eat them up. And then when they get to teenagers, you wished you had. I mean, you know, they, you know they, 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 there's problems. Some of you parents, you know, you, you look at your kids, you think, boy, when I had, you know, my kids will never do that. Don't ever say that. But I think that one of the signs, I, I read that sign that's, as you come into town, it says, there are still perfect parents out there. They just hadn't had kids yet. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, my kid will never do this. My kid will never do that. But there's a thousand words we'll eat. I'm telling you, things don't always go the way you want. But again, even in Christian life, you know, you do something good, you think, man, God's going to be pleased and everybody else is going to be pleased. Let me just tell you something. The only way to avoid criticism is to say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. But that's really not true. They're going to criticize you if you say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. Do what you need to do and don't worry about the criticism. Do what is right. I have never done anything. I've been preaching for 35 years, and I can tell you this. Is one consistency in my life is there's always going to be somebody unhappy with what you've done. Always. That's why a lot of preachers get out of preaching, to be honest with you. They, they haven't realized that truth. I have people in the church will come to me and say, well, you know, Mitchell, you know, nobody appreciates what I've done. I have to remind them, well, who are you doing it for? Because God does. God appreciates what you do. God sees what you do, and God will reward you for what you've done. But, but the devil will turn it around to us and say, look, things aren't the way you like them. But let me tell you what Paul told us to do. He said this in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Actually, I don't think that's the right verse. I think it's in 1 Corinthians. But, uh, but he says, don't be weary in well-doing. Larry, look that up for me. I think it's 1 Corinthians 16. That means you've got to keep on keeping on. No, it is Galatians. It is Galatians. <laughs> when I get something in my mind like that, I can't get it out. I thought I put the wrong verse up there. But, you know, you're always going to have problems. And that's why it says, do not be weary in well-doing, for in due seasons you'll reap if you faint not. There's always going to be problems. You know, you want the pot at the end of the rainbow, but, you, you know, if you do that, you're going to have to put up with the rain. Like an old, you know, remember the old 45 records? Some of you are old enough to remember 45 records. 
I remember when I was a kid, we had, you know, we'd buy 45 records. You go down to the store, you had a record player, and you played 45 records because you couldn't afford an album. You know, I mean, that was, that was a lot of money. And you didn't want the album. You wanted to, you, there was some hit song out. You couldn't get a CD. You couldn't get digital download. Apple Music wasn't available at that time. You know, you had, you had one choice. There wasn't even a, 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 when I remember the 45 records, you didn't even have a, a tape recorder. You didn't have any of that stuff. You had a record player or you could listen to the radio. Those were the only two options you had. But you hear something on the radio, you got to have this song. I mean, I just got to have that song. That song was written just for me. And you go, and what, what was one of the things about the 45 records? It had two songs on it. You'd flip it over and there'd be another song, but it always put the crappiest song on the other side. See, if you, to get what you want, you have to take what you don't. That's life. To get what you want in life, you're going to have to take the things that you don't. You know, if you think that you're going to get a job and everything's going to be perfect, Everybody's going to love you. The boss is going to be fine with everything you do, and he's never ever going to ask you to do anything that you don't want to do. This is your wake-up call. It ain't going to happen. Life is not that way. There's always going to be a problem. Even people can be problems. They're not always going to treat you right, are they? In fact, brethren are not always going to treat you right. I know we're all kin folks, but kin folks are not always kind folks. You know, they may wish some bad things on you. And I, 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 I've said several times, I am so glad that I, you know, that God is a merciful God because I'd hate to stand before some of my brethren on the judgment day. You know, just no mercy. No grace. Now, now they want to receive grace and they want to receive mercy, but they have no mercy. Let me just tell you, that's just life. You're going to run into that. You know, it, it just bad things happen. I heard about this one thing. You know, there was these three men stranded on an island. They, they were about to starve to death on this island. And they had just given up hope. They are about to go and, and just lay down and die. They looked out in the surf and they saw this bottle in the surf. Though One of them runs out and he gets the bottle. He takes the cap off. And when he takes the cap off, out pops a genie out of that bottle. The genie said, all right, I'm going to give each one of you a wish. There's three wishes. Each one of you gets a wish. You can have but one wish, and as soon as you make that wish, it'll happen. First one said, I wished I was back in Tennessee, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and zap, he was right back in Tennessee. The second one said, oh, I wished I was back in England, my, my homeland, and zap, Right away, he, he wound up in England. The third one looked around. He saw he was all by himself. He said, I wished I had my two friends back. <laughs> Things just don't always work out the way you want them or when you want them to. And you've got to have a PhD. You got to, in order to succeed, you've got to have that pure human determination in order to make it. Do you see that verse again? 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast, unmovable, always working, uh, abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Look at that again. Steadfast, that means hard rock, hold on tight, always immovable. Don't let anything move you. Just always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever your goals, your dreams, you can make it if you just get educated. To have that BA and MA and PhD, you got to have a believing attitude. I mean, you look through the Bible. According to your faith, be it unto you. You got to have that motivated action. You're going to have to put some action behind what you believe. And then you've got to have pure human determination, a believing attitude, motivated action, pure hearted determination. That's how you live a successful life. Do you need a believing attitude? I'm believing, I mean really believing in Christ, His Word, His ability to save you. Start out this, you know, the, the rest of this year, we're almost in June, mid-June, to, to, to start, get, it, get your B.A. This is graduation season. You can graduate this morning with a B.A. I guess that some of us have a believing attitude, but you've, you've never had the M.A., the motivated action. You believe, but you haven't acted. 
Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You know, I've talked to some young people. I, I, I may have worried some a little bit too much, but I, I don't know because they're, the, they're, they're at that age where they, you know, what would happen if you die kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, they believe. I ask them, do you believe? Oh, yeah, I believe. Well, then you need to, you got your BA, great. But you need to get your MA, motivated action. You need to do something about that. You need to do something. I mean, you need to turn now around. You know what now turned around is? One, W-O-N. If you want to win, you must begin. For some, perhaps you've been coming here off and on for a good while. This is really your congregation, but you haven't let it be known. You're you just content to just be considered a visitor. Get your MA this morning. I mean, this is graduation Sunday. Some of y'all need to graduate. You need to get that BA and that MA. And no doubt, some of us need a PhD. We have let things that have happened sidetracked us. We've allowed things that disappointed us sidetrack us. We've allowed people to distract us and sidetrack us. Our commitment to the Lord has been placed on the back burner because of some problem with some person. Get your PhD. Start off this morning with pure human determination. So, I'm going to ask you this morning, uh, how educated are you? You can leave this morning with your BA, MA, and PhD. We can set you up this morning. And if we can help it this morning, you believe in Christ, you want to turn from your sins, confess your faith, be baptized, that's that motivated action, added to the body of Christ, and then he says, be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. That's it, that pure human determination to take to see it to the end. Can we help you this morning? Now, if you need to say, well, Mitchell, maybe I need to study some more. You, you know, when you, when you get those degrees, you have to study. Well, come talk to me, we'll sit down and study. But I want you to know you don't need to leave out of here today without your BAMA and PhD. If we can help you this morning, I want to encourage you. As we stand, we offer the invitation.